Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So how was your Diwali? I hope that you all have enjoyed yourself to the fullest, but at the same time, you must have prepared a bit for your exams as well. Okay. So on that note, I hope that you have prepared and in order to boost your preparation, I have brought to you this video of current affairs, wherein we will be discussing very important questions that can become a mark for you in your phase one examination of RBS, LB and Nabat. So let's begin this video. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel till now, then what are you waiting for, guys? We try to provide you with exclusive content that is helpful for your examinations. Like we have started with the short videos by Tanvi ma'am on finance, current affairs and other things are there already that we are doing for you all. So if you want to get your hands on the rich content, then do subscribe our channel and hit the bell notification. Now, the important part for you is that you can download the PDF of this session on the Telegram channel. The link of that channel is in description below. Okay. So on that note, let's begin this session. With which organization has Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation partnered to build customer trust in communication? Geo, Airtel, Truecaller, Arcom, BSNL. So here the right answer is option C, true caller. So basically, the uh, Indian Railways or uh, Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation and true caller have partnered, partnered in order to build the trust of customers who are calling on the helpline number of Indian Railways that yes, you have called the right person and basically true caller does what it tells you the identity of the other person with whom you are talking to okay so that is the way in which the indian railways is trying to build up the confidence of the customers here that yes your information is going in the right hands if you are booking any ticket or anything like that okay so that was how the things are planned between both of these organizations now the next thing is the helpline number of the national railways now i hope that majority of you must have used this once or a while in your lifetime so there is no extra effort in knowing this number or memorizing this number but obviously since this is in news you should be aware about the helpline number as well okay so those who don't remember the number now you know that 139 is the helpline number of the indian railways so do remember that okay How much amount did the union budget allocate to MG Narega in 2021-2022? So guys, where does this question come from? The reason is that recently MG Narega scheme has run out of funds in majority of the states. That's why this was in the news and maximum to the maximum extent, I think that this would be the question that can be framed out of this news but still mg narega is a very very important flagship scheme of the indian government therefore it is your responsibility to cover mg narega thoroughly okay now as far as this question is concerned the right answer is rupees 73000 crores so 21 states out of the 35 in which this scheme is running have run out of the funds okay so you can see in this chart also in this figure also but we will discuss this figure in detail a bit later but let, let's have a look at the sentences so under the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act scheme 21 states have run out of funds and the negative balance stands at rupees 8686 crores as of this day when we are discussing this news okay so the scheme's total budget is rupees 73,000 crores. Now this reminds me that last year in the year of Corona, the central government made a historic allocation to MG Narega, which was the highest in the history of MG Narega as well. Can you tell me that what was the total budgetary allocation of MG Narega in 2020? Because it was historical. Okay. So do mention it in the comment section below. Moving further. MG Narega data shows that 13% of the households who demanded work under the scheme were not provided work. So this is also one of the drawbacks of this scheme that it is not able to provide work to the people who are seeking employment under this scheme. Now, 
21 out of 35 states have run out of their funds the black portion as you can see are the states which have already used 100 percent of the allocated funds under the mg narega now the states which have been specifically pointed out like himachal pradesh uttar pradesh andhra tamil kerala so these are the states which have used more than the allocated amount so this is the percentage of the allocated amount that they have used under the scheme okay so himachal pradesh as we can see has used 135.2 percent of the fund that was allocated to it uh, under this scheme okay so this is very high but they have they are already in the deficit Andhra Pradesh 137%, Tamil Nadu 139.3%, Kerala 127.1%. Now, guys, what is the implication of this thing of running out of funds? This implies that the workers who have done work under the scheme are not getting their payments, are not getting their wages. So this is ultimately going to harm the laborers, the wagers who have already provided work under the MG Narega scheme. Jinko aap employment nahi de rahe unka to chalo next level ki baat ho gai. But still jo have the people who have already worked, what about them? How will you provide them with the money? How will they survive if you are not able to provide the money? So this is the implication of that. So this is a very relevant question that can be asked in your descriptive as well that is mg narega scheme failing so why did the current scenario okay so i think you should prepare yourself to face such a question in your esi descriptive paper of rb next is i have already discussed this thing that this is the percentage of the allocated fund in fy22 the total expenditure including payments that was due for 79,810 crores, okay? So payments are also included under the total expenditure. MG Narega does not only pay wages, it also creates employment. So if you want to create employment, then you obviously you need expenditure. You need to incur expenditure. Then only you can create employment and then only you can pay the wages. So all of these included are, all of these are included in the MG Narega scheme. The negative net balance of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu stood at 2,323 crores and 1,999 crores. Okay, so you don't have to memorize these things. But this is just to show you that the majority of the deficit is by Tamil Nadu or, and Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so these two states are the major contributors towards this deficit. So I hope that this is clear, but I'm again saying that do not ignore it, cover the scheme thoroughly again for the for, for one more time, okay? Which state and union territory has launched the Paryavaran Sathi chatbot and website to increase participation of youth in anti-pollution campaigns? Delhi, Punjab, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana. So these are the five states out of which Delhi is the right answer. So we know that Delhi and CR is the region that is facing this problem of pollution at the extreme level. Okay. So those who are residing in Delhi would know how extreme the pollution is because we also we are in Delhi. So we cannot see beyond one meter. Okay. When it is it is in December and January in the morning and in the evening. Not even even in the evening, but in the morning, it's very the fog not actually the fog but smoke is very intense that we cannot see and this is very harmful and in actuality if i were to tell you the reality this smoke also affects the eyes so this is something that we have actually felt in uh, those people who are residing in delhi or who are residing in delhi or who have resided at one point of time would agree with me that yes it is impacting the health but the impacts of the air pollution on the health of the people are not that obvious or we can say have not been brought to the limelight at present okay so that is one thing that needs to be done in the field of air pollution also we need to control the air pollution and do remember that india's first smoke tower is also in delhi cp okay now coming back to this news paryavaran sathi chatbot and website have been launched to increase the participation of youth in the anti-pollution campaigns okay so here you can also prepare 
a note or an answer for your descriptive paper of ESI on climate change and air pollution. Do remember that these are the hot topics that you need to cover. This campaign is a collaboration between the Delhi government and UNICEF's UBA initiative that aims to bring the participation of youth in several social uh, issues. Okay, so UNICEF's UBA and Delhi government have partnered to bring over 10 lakh youth uh, under this campaign, and out of this amount, 50,000 are from Delhi itself. Now, Delhi government has also launched a one-stop website, DelhiFightsPollution.in, to inform about the pollution levels in the national capital and steps taken to control the situation. On the other hand, okay, so this is a separate news. Delhi Deputy CM Manish Sodia has launched Parents Sambad, which is basically an outreach campaign. Now, I have mentioned this within this news only because this is about the same union territory. Okay, the same government is doing the things and this is not a very significant thing that the CM, Deputy CM of Delhi has done. Okay, so it's just a parent samvad, nothing else like parent-teacher meeting. So it's the parent minister meeting. Who is the Director General of Indian Coast Guard? K. Natarajan is the right answer. Now why is he in the news? Because he inaugurated the Indian Coast Guard ship Sarthak. ICGS Sarthak at Goa. Okay. Now ICGS Sarthak will be based at Porbandar in Gujarat. So this will be deployed at Porbandar, Gujarat. Guys, do pay attention to this thing. This can also become a question because we have seen that RBI, SEBI and also NABAD, they tend to go into the details. Okay. So don't uh, give them the opportunity to scratch it to the ground. Okay. Porbandar in Gujarat is the place. ICGS Sartak is the fourth OPV, okay, offshore petrol vessel that has been developed by the Goa Shipyard Limited for the Indian Coast Guard. So, a total of five OPVs are to be developed by Goa Shipyard Limit Limited, and this one is the fourth in that edition. Next is recently INS Tushil which is a stealth frigate of the Indian Navy. So this has also been launched at the Jantar shipyard. Now this shipyard is not located in India. It is a Russian shipyard. Now, why is Indian stealth frigate being, uh, being launched in a Russian port? Okay, so the right answer here is that India and Russia both have collaborated in 2016 that, okay, we are going to develop the Talwar class stealth frigate, four stealth frigates will be developed in collaboration with Russia. Two will be developed in Russia and the other two in India only. The two that Russia are developing, Russia is developing, will be there in, will be in India by 2023. Okay. The next point of importance here is that this is the seventh frigate. INS Tushil is the seventh frigate of the Indian Army. Sorry, Navy. Okay, so obviously before INS Tushil, there were be other stealth frigates with the Indian Navy of the same class, of the Talwar class. So don't get confused between these two things, okay? Four additional, so these are the four additional ships that are being developed with the help of Russia. But already we have certain Talwar class stealth frigate in the Indian Navy in operation and INS Tushil, which has been inaugurated at the Yanta shipyard, shipyard in Russia, is the seventh for the Indian Navy. Okay. The next point is the meaning of Tushil. So Tushil means protector shield in Sanskrit. Do remember this as well. Which country has operationalized the world's largest hydrogen fuel cell power plant? The right answer is Republic of Korea, which is also known as South Korea. South Korea has operationalized this world's largest hydrogen fuel cell power plant at Incheon. Now guys, this is located at Southern Powers, Shin Incheon Between Center. If you don't remember this part, if you, uh, you are not able to recollect it at the examination center, then also it is okay because nobody, I don't think that any examiner would be interested in this center. 
but the examiner might be interested in the country which has launched this or within the country the exact place so incheon is not a very difficult name to remember so this you can remember okay so south korea has done so guys south korea is one country that is leading the world in hydrogen cars hydrogen fueled cars so do remember this as well now this is a very basic question of geography that i'm going to ask you can you guys tell me the name of the border between north korea and the south korea because this is a very contentious border in the world one of the contentious borders i should say in the world so you have to name the border there are borders like we have red cliff border along the pakistan and india so similarly there is the name of the border and that you have to tell me in the comment section below and here i would like to end this session thank you so much guys for watching this video and if you like the content then do not forget to subscribe our channel thank you